Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to this seminar. Uh, my name's Ben, uh, and this is uh, Adrian, uh, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about content uh, and how you can use it effectively uh, to run uh, an effective search strategy and to drive more traffic to your sites utilizing content. So just to give you a little bit of a mini agenda, um, I'll probably run through a little bit about who we are as a company uh, and what we do, um, why content marketing is important as a whole and why it's important uh, to, use, to use content effectively and why you should have a content strategy. Um, Adrian will then sort of run through uh, results and sort of how to create um, a, a, an effective uh, content strategy, laying the foundations and sort of monitoring and adapting that sort of stuff. And then um, we'll go through um, sort of the results you can expect uh, once you've created a sort of well-engineered content strategy as a whole. So let's start with who we are as a company. Uh, so Content Plus, um, we're basically a content marketing agency. Uh, we're based in Canary Wolf, we're headquartered in Canary Wolf. Uh, and we've been around since 2002 as a company. Uh, the company's global, but we sort of help uh, small to medium sized businesses uh, drive more traffic to their websites utilizing content. Uh, so we've been doing it for a long time. Uh, and I guess what sort of separates us from other companies is that we're not just sort of churning out copy for the sake of it. Um, we're actually utilizing the content to gear a return. So everything we do is bespoke, everything we do is unique. It's very much a, a cult consultative service where we're actually trying to make sure that the content we're creating generates a return. So we sit down with our clients, we say to them, look, what is it you're trying to get out of your website? Is it more leads? Is it more sales? Is it brand authority? Whatever that may be, and then we'll create the type of content, whatever that, whatever that is, um, whether in the forms of news articles or blogs or video or anything like that, uh, and then utilize that to, to gain the return. Sorry, excuse me. Um, so we've got um, all, everything that we do is in is in house. Uh, we've got a very sort of solid infrastructure. So everything from our researchers and reporters, so where we're actually going to get the content, uh, is all in house. So we spend a lot of time on that. All our journalists, again, we don't use freelancers. Uh, we write in a, a number of languages as well. So this is all in house. Uh, in terms of actually creating the content. Uh, our account management team are sort of con content marketing specialists. Um, you know, they, they uh, are very well versed in the industry, sit down with our clients and go through everything they need to know. Uh, we actually build newsrooms for our clients as well, or media centers, ways to house the content, making sure that it looks good and that it's converting, etc. So all our developers are in-house right the way through to our, uh, the promotion of the content. So whether that's through email marketing channels or social channels and just overall visibility of our content, we want to make sure that it's actually getting promoted and people are actually finding that and coming through with that. So everything we do is in-house. We've got big infrastructure and we've been around for a very long time. Lots of expertise. So start with sort of fundamentals, what is content marketing? So it's been a bit of a buzzword uh, over the last year and a half or so. It was originally coined by a guy called Joe Paluzzi, um, and just in the last year it's kind of taken off. And everybody knows that content is important for your website since Bill Gates said it ages ago. Um, but it's just making sure that you're actually utilizing that content to drive traffic to your website. So content marketing is a technique of creating and distributing unique relevant and valuable information in order to attract and engage your target audience. So it's what can I write or what can I sort of create and um, use and, and sort of publish uh, from my perspective that relates to my products and services that also interests my target audience um, and then making sure that people can find it. So I have a content strategy. Why is it important to have content? So the facts. 26% of total B2B marketing budgets are currently spent on content marketing. So these are just general industry trends that we've been looking at over the last couple of years. 70% of all SME marketing budgets are projected to be spent online by 2015. This is always going to be growing, um, etc. 60% of people say that content helps to make better purchasing decisions. So if we're talking about an e-commerce website, anybody that's getting the information beforehand, the idea is that you've got everything there on your website. It means they don't have to go elsewhere. You're sort of less of just sort of a price and a product and just trying to get bums and seats. It's about making sure that you're helping your users to make a fully informed decision before they're actually making a product purchase. And you can see that by these sort of industry stats. 
73% of business decision makers prefer information in the form of articles over advertisements. So business decision makers, this is generally the most but, um, in the B2B market. That's what people are targeting. And it's about giving them what they want. It's not about interruptive marketing anymore, sort of the forms of advertisements and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that sort of thing, but people want to be sort of pulled in by um, things that they find interesting and relevant. And it's about associating yourself with those forms of content. And if the industry stats aren't enough for you, let's look at Google themselves. So first and foremost, we care about trying to get the stuff that people will really like, the good, the compelling content in front of them. And that's obviously from, from Matt Cutts. So you know, Google, um, over the last couple of years, when you have a look at the, the algorithm updates with Penguin and Panda, what they're trying to make sure is that as a user, I'm getting the most benefit from this search engine. And when I type in a particular term, it's the content I'm after. It's not the links, it's not the ranking, it's not a well up, well, it is a well up to my site, but I want it to be sort of good from a user's perspective, but at the same time, it's the content I'm actually after, the meat in the middle. So if you have great content, Google will always try to return it because that's what the user's actually after. So where do people go wrong? There's lots of ways to do SEO and to, to have a good content strategy. But generally, and I mean, this isn't sort of an exact science as such, what you find is that a lot of people are stuck in sort of traditional ways of marketing. And there's, again, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But in digital marketing as a whole, everything moves really, really quickly. Um, you've got the updates, you've got different forms of sort of platforms that people can access, the, the, take, uh, the take off of social media. It's just making sure you're keeping up with the times and that you're not sort of stuck with what worked two years ago. Um, you look at things like some of the search engines that were around a little while ago and now it's purely Google and who were Google 15 years ago. So it's just making sure that um, you're, you're not stuck with what's worked for you before and you're always looking at ways to improve and adapt your, um, your, your strategies online. Little or no understanding of how to analyze website performance. So what we're talking about here is, is you, some of you may own your own businesses or work for businesses and you're, you're great in terms of your product knowledge and what you can do uh, for your clients and services you provide. But realistically, if you're talking about um, uh, search engine performance and your, your website performance as a whole, are you able to look at what you're currently doing, looking at that performance and making sure that you understand it? Because you, we, I've met a number of people who've got, say, say their own SEO agencies or their digital marketing agencies, and they're producing reports and they're like, oh, they're doing this, they're building me links, and they're writing me a blog and things like that. But what is that actually doing for you? Do you understand these reports, or is it just a list of data and they're basically sort of ticking a box? So it's making sure that you know what's going on. Anybody that you work with should be able to explain to you in layman's terms exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it. So it's just making sure that. Um, you know, you understand what's going on with your website and utilizing tools to monitor that. One size fits all solutions. So again, this isn't as simple as my competitor build links, so I'm just going to build links, or he writes a blog, so I'm going to write a blog. Making sure you have an effective search strategy is to um, have a look at the sort of foundation of your website, what you're currently doing, where you're going wrong, where you're going right, and then building a solution to go around that. Saying you do SEO is a bit like saying, I play sport. It's so broad. It's such a broad term. There are so many ways that you could do it. I've got an understanding of what you're trying to tell me. Yes, you want to drive traffic to your website, but you know, how are you doing it? What's going well? What's going wrong? And it's just making sure that you're not just reading a blog and going, oh, that blog said I need a Facebook site, so let's build a Facebook site and do nothing with it. And then the last thing is looking for a quick fix. So, you know, if you want an instant return, you need to go and do paid search or PPC. There's a reason why the organic search market is so uh, competitive, why it's so, um, so, so why people make so much money from it, it's because that's where all the users go. And it's not as simple as, you know, let's work with somebody for a month and if I make a return, I'll stay with them. You've got to look at it and say, I'm here for short-term, medium, and long-term strategies. And there are ways to do it quickly, but it's just making sure that you're going to be there for the long run as well. So this brings us on to the foundation, uh, and Adrian's going to talk a little bit about that. Hello. <laughs> um, OK, so just a bit of background about me. My team is primarily responsible for uh, setting out the content strategies for each customer that we have and then monitoring and developing and proving the ROI over time. So 
like Ben mentioned uh, earlier, it's great to know why you need to have content, but it can be really daunting to figure out how you go about doing it. I see a lot of people uh, start writing their own blog and thinking that that's going to work for them. So what we really need to take a look at is what will work for you and what you want to achieve with that content. So if we start with um, the foundation, so planning your content strategy, you need to first look at where you stand. So a lot of uh, what my team does is we do what we call a health check, an SEO health check. And this takes a look at uh, what your current content is like on your site because it's not about content in terms of just blogs or a news area, it's about what your actual product pages have on it. For example, if you're an e-commerce client, you might say to me, well, I'm selling shoes, so I don't want people to read an essay before they buy my shoes. That's fine, but the search engines need to know what that page is about. So you need to have well-optimized content talking about what you're trying to sell on every page that you're selling it. Where you place this content, all the way down to what's bolded uh, and what isn't, is very much key. So you take a look at that. We, we analyze your site. We see, okay, fine, they have really a uh, thin amount of content or duplicate content. A lot of people that I ran into said, uh, well, I sell Panasonic camcorders, so I just copy the product description from Panasonic and put it on my pages. Well, that's duplicate content, and that will penalize your website. So we take a look at those measures. Uh, what we do next is backlinking profile. Not sure how familiar everyone is with off-site content strategies, but it's quite important to take a look at the overall strength that your website has in terms of the links coming into it. A link acts as a vote, so if you have a lot of links from a, a wide range of websites pointing to your site that are relevant um, to your industry, Google sees you or other search engines see you as more authoritative. Again, where you rank is also important. What are, what's the starting or the foundation point that we're trying to uh, build upon? Your social presence. Um, I think what Ben touched on earlier about the idea everyone has LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, so I'm going to get it, doesn't really work. You know, you have to think about is LinkedIn the right platform, is Facebook the right platform, and is Twitter, and how do I change the way that I um, work and operate on these platforms to drive the most traffic for their audience. And lastly, you want to take a look at your usability and your site optimization. So what this means is take yourself out of the owner of that site and look at it from a user's perspective. Um, I had one client who had a, a huge dropout rate from their conversion from their basket uh, in their checkout page and they couldn't understand why. So I did a test through it and realized it's actually really hard to find the buy now button. And when you do it, you don't know, you know, there's no thank you page or anything like that and it's very confusing. So try to get your friends and family uh, to take a look at your site journey and from somebody not deeply involved in it and figure out how is the structure laid out on your site. You know, ideally you want a tree structure that has a clear navigation down through the URLs but also through the actual usability. So once you've done that, what we do next is we take a look at what your goals are for your website. So that can be conversion if you're an e-commerce client. You want people to buy from your site. That's a simple goal. How does content help you? Uh, you know, that's what we'll talk about in a minute. Some people, um, for example, if you're selling insurance or you're a financial client where people can't purchase something directly through a checkout basket, we want to take a look at increasing the engagement and the brand authority of your website. People need to trust that you know what you're talking about and that your service is valuable to them or they're not going to call you um, or make a purchase offline. And then again, a lot of people use this for brand awareness and buzz. That's a lot to do with social media interaction. Um, and doing it properly, I think, now that everyone is on social media, you really need to know exactly how to create the engagement and the buzz. All right, so when we're talking about how to actually do this, how do you grow your strategy? The three areas you want to look at is first creating the right strategy, monitoring it, and then adapting it. If we start with uh, create, in this order is how you need to think about it. So what do you want the content to achieve that you have on your website and then what type of content will achieve this? If you think about it the other way around, you're going about this backwards. So if you think, I really like white papers, I want to have a white paper on my website, well what's the point if that doesn't help your overall um, goal for conversion or engagement? So there's two types of content that people use this for. One being SEO, 
Uh, as we know, Google prefers fresh, unique, relevant, regularly updated content. So this is where things like news articles or daily blogs come, um, come to play. The idea here is that, I guess it was like maybe a month or so ago, we started thinking about, okay, when I search for something like X Factor, I want to see the most recent posts about the X Factor come up. I don't want to see the X Factor website. Google understands this and thereby often will rank news articles or blog posts higher up than the actual websites, which you would think are more authoritative than that one piece of content. Yes, it's only for a day, but the aim here with this content is to drive traffic in for that day to your site and then build that content with calls to action and a clear user journey to where you want them to get to a converting page. So that leads into clear calls to action. You know, think about before websites um, started having an e-commerce value. Did everyone just get a book about where the checkout basket should be on your website? No. Somebody started it that is always going to be in the top right hand corner. Amazon is a really good example and John Lewis as well of how to clearly great, uh, create e-commerce websites that lead people on a clear journey path. The next thing you want to take a look at is hyperlinked keywords and I'll touch on this later on about how it's evolved but this is a really good way in topical daily content to boost up um, landing pages or product pages. So the idea is that you keep using certain words that are linking to a specific page over and over again and eventually Google or search engines will not rank that news article for that term but will rank the product page instead which is what you want people to do. In the end if you're using content for SEO yes you want it to be relevant you want people to read it but you actually want them to get to a page where they're going to convert. <clears throat> and then lastly the idea is opinion led pieces to promote social media interaction. So yeah, be a little bit controversial on social media, you know, talk about things, get the buzz started. That's actually what's going to spread these days. It's not about always playing it safe or just always hooking up a feed of your content onto your social media. You need to ask questions, you need to set up polls, you need to create competitions, otherwise people get bored uh, and bounce off of it. The other reason people use um, content is for brand authority or awareness. So you might think, why would a global or international client uh, use us or use content when people know who they are? Well, they, people know who they are, but they're also trying to get a younger generation of, of users in here now. They're trying to get uh, a big share of the online search market. So people use content in terms of thought leadership to position themselves even though they might be seen offline as that, but to position themselves online as the thought leader. So white papers. White papers are a good example of this. You might create a white paper for your customers. It can have a little bit of case studies in there, it can have some facts about the industry quote from you. But another really good way is to get email addresses. So make it a downloadable thing. Get people to put their email address in so that you're building up your database for your acquisition side while appeasing your customer market. Case studies, again, demonstrate results. A lot of um, my clients say to me, yeah, but case studies are really difficult to get. There's a lot of different ways that we can work around uh, doing a full interview with the client. But case studies really do position you as having expertise and, and trust. It's, a, it's about credibility. Product features reinforce the service. And then best practice and guides, this is really important. Give something back to the people that are looking on your website. They want to know a little bit more information. You, you can't you know, get everything and not give anything. So if you give a guide or best practice about something to do in your industry and you're teaching your, your customers about it, they're more likely to trust you to buy more things from you down the line. So the next step is monitoring. This is what uh, my team is primarily responsible for. The idea here is that um, making sure to track your results allows you to keep moving forward in this industry that is always moving forward. You, you can't make a difference, you can't get ahead unless you are constantly monitoring it. So I've um, broken down some tools that we consider the top tools to use here. Number one truly is Google Analytics and Webmaster Tools. This will give you the best insight into how people are viewing your own website and what is and isn't working. It's really important to make sure you understand, not just from a bias perspective, like I created this uh, really great how-to page and I think everyone loves it. Well, if people are bouncing off of it or if no one's going there, then people don't like it and you have to change it. That's a fact. So make sure that you really are understanding how analytics and webmaster tools work. 
OpenSight Explorer is a really great way to take a look at your backlinking profile. I think Offsite has been neglected uh, up until the Penguin update that came out. And I think it's very, very important that you take a look at running these types of tools and just see, okay, do I have a large amount of links coming into my site that are actually damaging my site? Because if they are, you will not be able to get ahead with the content strategy the same way that you could if they weren't. The keyword difficulty tool tells you how competitive are those keywords that you are trying to rank for. If a site ranks above you by a lot and you're trying to target the same terms, go about it a different way. Everyone uh, who first gets an idea about keyword strategy comes to me and says, I want to I want to rank number one for landlord insurance. Yes, I'm sure you do because you know it, it's a, a highly converting term and it costs a lot of money in PPC. But Think about it as a user. The people that are converting are going to write long tail search terms. Yes, you want to have those short tail terms, but you also need to be factoring in the longer tail, less competitive terms in order to get a good click through rate and to get those people that are ready to buy the service. Zenu is telling you how Google looks at your site. Uh, one example, I had a client that had 400,000 top level pages on their site and they hadn't realized. This meant that it took Google something like four hours to crawl through a, a, I don't know, a third of their website and it, it gets bored and it stops and therefore it hasn't even got to the product pages that they're trying to get indexed. If your site is a huge mess, uh, and I'll warn people who use Magento, this can happen with Magento because of the way that it, it's easy to kind of trickle down and build this huge site architecture. You know, take a look at it. Can Google understand your site the way that you are understanding it? That will hinder how you go ahead and, and progress forward. And then lastly, insights for search. Um, this one's really, it's interesting about how you can use this tool. I'll give you an example. 45 years ago, saying something like business telephone systems would have been a really good keyword because a lot of people were looking for that type of integration. However, the trend now is to say unified communications. Using this tool will show you how the keywords are trending, what, what's popular, what's going downhill so that you're staying ahead of the game. Adapting. All right, so you've used all these tools, you've got like this huge report or your SEO company has given you a big report and then you're like, what am I supposed to do with it next? The idea is you really need to focus on what people want to see and give them more of that. So I always, I would say my favorite tools are analytics and webmaster tools. And if you set it up properly, including setting up goals and e-commerce, if you're an e-commerce client, you can really track and monitor exactly the user journey. So for example, I have a new blog and I've put all this content out. I look at analytics and I pull up the top 10 blog posts. This tells me about what people are finding interesting on my site. When you analyze this, look deeper. So how long are people staying on each of those topics? Where are they going afterwards? What are they doing? Are they following the user journey I want them to, or are they just coming in to read about Adele who bought a new home uh, and bought home insurance and then bouncing off because they just wanted to read about Adele? Or are they people that want to learn about home insurance and are going to go on to purchase my home insurance? So you need to think about what you're writing about and then what you want the people to do after they've read it. Review your keyword strategy. Stop using the same keywords over and over and over again, pointing to the same landing pages. That is going to cripple how Google actually views your site. It looks spammy. Analyze the user journey. This is, I think, one that isn't done enough in SEO. It's not always about the tools. It's literally about how does your top level navigation look? Is it easy for people to find your products and services? Once they do find it, two clicks away and they should be able to convert. No more than two clicks or you're going to lose them. Monitor the converting pages. This is where you can set up a funnel in analytics and you can really take a look at how people are navigating or flowing through your website. Utilize your social media presence. So draw, when you have a blog post about something, um, I don't know, let's go back to celebrities, for example, uh, with the Oscars, if you write a blog post about that, start asking questions. Start bringing people into the conversation rather than dictating the conversation on social media. And then look to expand your content offering. So rather than just continuing to write more blogs, look at writing feature pieces or how-to guides or um, case studies. Develop and grow, otherwise you're just going to fall behind. So staying in the know, 
this is really about making sure that, okay, you're fine, you're not an SEO agency, um, you know, why do you have to stay in the know? You can just employ somebody to do that for you. Well, a lot of my clients go, yeah, I get this monthly report, I don't know, it has a bunch of stats in it, tells me where I am, you know, so I, I'm assuming everything's fine. Try to stay in the know yourself. You know, there's no no point in uh, in having a business if you're not going to understand how the changes around it affect it. If somebody changed something in your supply chain of your business, you would know and you would care about it. So pay attention to what is happening in the world of search. Keyword variations, a huge one right now. Not linking the same text all the time. You will be punished for it. Using it more naturally, longer tail. Search algorithm updates. Will it affect you before you get hit? Find out what Panda and Penguin were all about and figure out if your site using those tools is going to be hit or has been hit. Optimize your site as a whole. Metadata is huge. Make sure that every page on your site is unique, has unique metadata. Everything that you're writing, you've written yourself and is well researched and well educated and is not copied from other people or you will be penalized for that. And be a step ahead. Videos, infographics, animations, all of these things now are making their way into search and actually helping you better your site's visibility in search. So take a look at how you can integrate video into your website to help you rank highly when people are, are searching for video in the SERPs. And then use social networks effectively. Again, I'm just pushing this one because there's a ton you can do now with polls and competitions, um, creating games, all of that type of interaction will really help your business. But no, if you sell hardwood flooring, should you have a strong LinkedIn presence? I don't, I don't think so, personally. Uh, so make sure you're picking the right things, you know? Like, put your time and your focus into what's actually gonna further your business rather than just because everyone is doing everything. So Ben's gonna talk you um, just through a sum up now. And then, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask us after. Oh, sorry. And he's gonna hit me. <laughs> so, just as a whole, um, especially in Content Plus, the main sort of thing of everything we do is about growth. It's about taking you from where you currently are, building a very, very solid foundation, and making sure that we're working with you in the long run. Um, so effectively, um, yes, we know you want short-term wins. Yes, we know you don't want to spend you know, lots of money on somebody who's basically just going to be you know, just, just not giving you a return. Uh, but we also know that if you want to have a really, really good organic search presence and drive uh, lots of traffic to your site over a number of time, it will take time. So it's just important that you lay a very, very solid foundation. Uh, you, you, you create a, a very good strategy. Uh, you monitor and you adapt. I mean, it's just making sure that um, if you're not measuring your, your content, you can't improve it. You know, as Adrian said, if, if you're not keeping an eye on what's going on, you're basically just going to struggle. You need to analyze your data. You need to sign up to Google Analytics. You need to sign up to Webmaster Tools. These things are free. Um, and make sure that, um, you know, you, you, you work out how to use them and have a look at what's going on with your website. And if you do that, you'll effectively bear fruit. Um, so you'll now have, firstly, enhance, uh, enhanced your, your, uh, your brand's authority as a whole. So... <laughs> Okay, sorry, it's really luck. Uh, so, enhance your brand's authority as a whole. So, this is not just about the short term, the short, the short term here, where we're getting bums in the seats, we're selling our products, we're getting people to sign up to our services. It's a quick win, and then basically you're a flash in the pan, and a year down the line, everybody else is doing what you're doing. Um, enhance your brand. You know, there's there, there's nothing to stop you from becoming a huge global company. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. So it's making sure you get that authority and making sure people trust you. And obviously online, credibility is so much more important. The second thing actually says uh, we, you can increase high quality uh, organic traffic to your site and focus on high quality. This is not just about hits. Anybody can generate hits to a website or visitors into a shop. It's about making sure you're thinking about who your target audience actually is and making sure that you're giving them exactly what they want from your website, not what you want to give them. It's not as simple as price, product, service. You know, Google is a source uh, of information. It's making sure that, um, you know, if you're going to uh, um, rank really, really well, you need to be able to, to give somebody something as a whole, not just basically what you want to give them. And that's why sites like Wikipedia rank really, really well, because they're full of information. 
you know, Google isn't there to rank the site that has the cheapest products or the best quality service or the site that's been around the longest. It's about making sure the site that gives the most information on this subject will rank the best. So it's really, really important that you know you create a good quality uh, content strategy. You will increase the traffic. Online conversions, so increase your online conversions. That's basically what, what you'll be looking at as well. Through higher quality traffic, through bringing um, people uh, to your site and making sure that's a, a fully informed decision that they can make with the content, with the content that you're offering. Uh, you would have developed a stronger social media presence. So again, with social media, it's not as simple as direct returns. You know, if I have 10,000 Facebook followers, how many products will I sell? It's not as simple as that. It's about getting as many people as you can who want to associate themselves with your brand in the right place and then using that as a marketing tool as a whole. So creating good content acts as a great hook to engage them and to attract them to your site as well. And the last thing we look at is just as a whole, you will build up an authoritative and optimized website. And that's not only good for the user in terms of them coming and seeing you as a source of credibility and a great place for information, but also for Google. On a basic level, content is king, we all know that, and having regularly updated content on your site will help you in search. So that's it, basically. Uh, thanks for listening to us. We have a stand uh, just out there, literally where you come in. Uh, I think it's C35. So if you'd like to come out the exit and then work your way around. Uh, we will also do like a free site analysis for you. So we've got some laptops out there and some of our uh, consultants. And uh, if you've got any questions at all, just regarding search as a whole, not just content, you know, we do know what we're talking about. And we'll be able to sort of have a good chat with you about where any sort of things that you're doing well, things that are going wrong, and where we can fit into that. Uh, check out our website or just ask us some questions uh, now. So thank you very much.